What a nice happy community here of battery cells. Oh no, it's a Samsung 50S and it's got a- I'm probably gonna get a lot of heat for this, but hear me out. You probably already know it's the Samsung 50S. And no, that isn't clickbait. I have a good argument here with good sources. In fact, I'm using them in my battery build and I've gotten a lot of opinions on it, which is why I wanted to make this video. To fill you in, the 50S is hated for good reason. And the reason is, false advertising. And false advertising pisses me off just as much as the next guy. And it's for that reason that it's been blacklisted by most people. But if your build's like mine, the actual specs of the cell might really be your best option. For starters, they claim a capacity of five amp hours and a continuous discharge of 25 amps and a peak discharge of 45 amps. One of those is actually correct one of them is wrong, and one of them is so very, very wrong. I'm gonna share some real world claims from people who have actually done testing on the discharge. The first source is from a channel called Cool Watts. He did a bunch of testing on it. Under 20 amps, it ran exceptionally well. It also did great taking bursts at 25 amps, but built heat if maintained. Above 25 amps, he saw a bunch of voltage sag and heat and would not recommend usage. Another source is called Baitmo. They listed it at 17 amps continuous and 29.2 amps peak. The third source is He rates them at 20 amps continuous and 35 amps peak. I'll link all three of those sources down in the description. So for discharge, on all accounts, it's a great performer under 17 amps continuous and 25 amps peak. Some of those claimed higher, but that's the totally safe zone. So Obviously very much not what they claimed and shame on them for lying to our faces And if you still want to blacklist them for being slimy Understood, but you might want to hear this next part first. So let's get into capacity This is an area that they did not lie on at all It's listed at 5,000 milliamp hours and here are the numbers reported from Mooch 5117 milliamp hours 5122 milliamp hours 5,049 milliamp hours and 5,071 milliamp hours. So consistently getting even a tad bit higher than they claim. Super cool, especially because that's the top of the market for this size of cell at 21,700. Cool Watts found that it had 4,856 milliamp hours when only running it down to 2.8 volts instead of 2.5 like they claim. That's what he recommends for prolonging the life of any cell since it's not good on the cell to run it down that low. I'm pointing out his testing because he also did the same tests on the Molly Cell P45B and the new P50B, which are the two that people really seem to worship right now. The P45B claims 4,500 milliamp hours and he saw 4,269 running it down to 2.8 volts, which is probably about right. The P50B claims 5,000 milliamp hours, just like the Samsung 50S that he tested at 4,856 and he got 4,613 milliamp hours out of it. So the same test, the same claim capacity, the 50S measures 243 milliamps higher than the P50B. So why not buy the 50S? I'll answer that right now. If you are going to be pushing the amps near the claim discharge of the 50S, you will see a lot of voltage drop. So much that the P45B with 500 milliamp hours less capacity per cell then the 50S could last longer because of how much less voltage it's wasting. This is what people always bring up when they talk about the 50S. And it's true, as long as you know what range that is. I think a lot of people are confused what range that's the case. So will it work for me? Absolutely. Since the cell runs exceptionally well at 17 to 20 amps continuous and 25 amps peak, as long as you stay under those numbers, then you have industry leading energy density. My peak discharge per cell is 24 amps at 35 kilowatts, which would be pushing it according to the rules about claim discharge, but remember this is actual testing. They actually run good under 25 amps peak. And my estimation based on other bikes I've tested doing the same writing that I do is that I'll turn it down to 28 kilowatts peak power anyways, which is only 19 amps. So already my peak power could be in the true continuous range and I'll rarely be actually using more than 20 kilowatts on the trail, which is only 13.7 amps. So yes, it works fantastic for mine, but that doesn't mean that it'll work for yours. Here's 
three situations that I would not use the 50S. Number one, if you don't have a big battery. My battery has 392 cells. The more your voltage goes up, the less amps you draw, as long as you gear it right. The more cells you have in parallel, the more amps you can pull. So there's no way around just the sheer size of the battery required to effectively use 50S cells. If you want to pull any sort of high amps and you don't want a really big battery, it will. The next situation I would steer away from is a street bike. Even with my 7.3 kilowatt hour battery, it's still not going to be big enough to handle the amount of amps for a fun street bike using 50S cells, just because of the riding style. On the trail, I might see small spikes close to my peak rating, but I could actually hold 30 plus kilowatts on the street for a solid 20, 30 seconds at least, which might be fine, but it's a little close. And if my plan is to be cutting it that close, I'd rather give up some energy density and go for the P45B because the likelihood of me seeing significant voltage drop lowering my usable capacity anyways is actually pretty high. Personally, I still wouldn't go with the P50B since it's more than double the cost of the 50S and the capacity isn't actually a whole lot better than the P45B, which is similarly priced to the 50S. The last reason not to use the 50S is personally, I would feel less confident selling a battery with 50S cells. The Molly cells are generally more reliable, especially when not treated great. And I don't think I would take that risk when charging someone thousands of dollars for a built battery and I don't know how they're going to treat it. So in summary, I am not saying that the 50S is the best sell or that you should buy it. And even if I was, I'm no expert and, and you should verify anything that you hear with your own research. What I am doing is fighting the cancel culture type behavior where everyone hears a negative thing about a product and they're just damned to drag their name through the mud and yell at strangers about it on the internet for all eternity. It's still a great option, and there's still situations where it could even be the best for you. Plus, even if the P50B would be a little bit better, at more than double the price, why not look into the 50S and see if it would work? You're welcome to chat about this in the comments or on the Facebook group, but please make it a good discussion and not just fuming negativity. Follow the links in the descriptions and learn as much as you can from those great sources. Find your own and share them with the rest of us. But remember, we're all in the same hobby, trying to have a good time, and we have enough people angry at the whole hobby in general, so we don't need to be fighting each other. This is an awesome community, and I'm very happy to be a part of it. I've had great conversations with lots of amazing people, and I want that to be the face of our community as it grows. And thank you for all the support on this channel. It's awesome to see how much you guys support bums like me when there are tons of huge channels with more funding than just what's left over from a 9-to-5 job. I'll keep doing everything that I can to earn that support, so stay tuned, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.